Hello, my name is Michael Hammond and I'm introducing my book Exploring Digital Technology in Education. As you can imagine from the title, the book is about the opportunities and difficulties which theorising technology presents to those of us interested in education. One of the things that made Policy Press attractive to me as an author was the idea of publishing for a purpose. Of course, you cannot write anything without having a purpose, but not many publishers make such a big thing of it. So in writing the book, I kept coming back to what exactly was my purpose? What did I want to say about theorising technology? My best answer was that my purpose was to encourage my community, the community of educationists interested in technology, to be more theoretical. This is because we have a lot of descriptions about how technology is used, but we often fail to present a wider picture. As I argue in the book, it's as if the research community is producing a series of phrase books, one to help us get by when discussing technology A, another for technology B, yet another for technology C. But we've not developed a language which allows us to build up a convincing story about technology. In saying this, I'm not trying to put down description, Description can be a wonderful thing, but we can stand back more and offer perspectives on technology which might better help us understand how and why it is being used. So I wanted to promote theorising, not just any old theorising, but a way of theorising that was critical and distinctively educational. By all means, we should be enthusiastic about technology, but we should also give a more realistic and critical view. It might well fall to any of us to be the one in the room to stand up and say, you know what, it's more complicated than you think. A key challenge in writing this book was to say what theory is. I wanted to take a broad view. I argue that at heart, theory was about explaining, moreover explaining by drawing on concepts developed in the field. This means that we can theorise no matter whatever methodological tradition we work in. And when it comes to concepts and frameworks, some of us are more at home in social theory of say Bourdieu and Foucault, others in more technology focused theory such as actor network. Some draw on learning theories, including social constructivism and community of practice. Others stick more closely to technology based theories such as network learning or technology adoption. We need to keep an open mind as to which theoretical resources to use and how to apply them. Theorising, I argue in the book, is creative, as it involves stepping back and abstracting out the key ideas from a study. This means that the theories we put forward are always the work of our imagination. Moreover, theories are personal. The concepts we introduce come from our background and research tradition, and this leads us to be sensitised to some findings more than others. The theories we come up with are not true or false, but invitation for the reader to see the world or the social reality, in this case education, in a particular way. However, theorising is not making it up. It involves close attention to the data and a constant check of data against theoretical frame. Thank you for listening to this introduction. I hope you find something of value in the book, whether you're interested in technology, education or theory, or indeed all three. Best wishes for your own work, no matter in which direction you go.